If you don't know, you cannot say this is not a book. Similarly, for anyone to say there is no God, he should know the definition of God. If he does not know the definition of God, he cannot say there is no God. Now this atheist, he has an understanding of God by observing the different human beings. How do they worship God? And then he analyzes that this God, he's like me. This God requires to eat, he requires to sleep, he requires to rest, he requires help. So what is the use of believing in such a God? For example, if someone says, I do not believe in Islam, which is a religion of terrorism. I do not believe in Islam, which does not give rights to the woman. I do not believe in Islam, which does not give human rights. I do not believe in a religion Islam, which is unscientific. So I will tell that person, I too do not believe in a religion which, is, which believes in terrorism. I too do not believe in a religion which does not give rights to the woman, which does not give human rights, which does not believe with reason, logic and science. So because this person who does not believe in Islam, which is a religion of terrorism, does not give rights to his woman, does not give human rights, does not believe in reason and logic, is unscientific, what he has a picture of Islam is a wrong picture. So I too do not believe in such Islam. I believe in a religion called Islam, which does not believe in terrorism. Because Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 32, that if anyone kills any other human being, unless it be for murder or for spreading corruption in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. So according to the Quran, which is the cornerstone of Islam, killing any innocent human being is like killing the whole of nation. So how can this religion speak about terrorism, about killing innocent people? I know that Islam gives rights to the woman. I know that Islam has human rights. I know this religion of Islam is based on reason, logic and science. So I too reject a religion which believes in terrorism, which does not give women rights, which does not give human beings their rights, which is not based on reason, logic and science. But I have to explain to that person the true concept of Islam. It's my duty as a Muslim to clarify the correct concept of Islam. Today, the reason the media is maligning Islam, most of the non-Muslims, they have a misconception about Islam because they get the wrong information from the media. The media is spreading wrong things about Islam that Islam is a religion of terrorism, Islam does not give due rights to the woman, it does not give human rights, it's a religion not based on reason and logic, it's an unscientific religion. So I say even I reject such a religion called Islam. But I believe in a true religion of Islam which does not believe in killing any innocent human being, which gives women the due rights, which is based on reason and logic, which is based on scientific aspects. So similarly, when an atheist says there is no God, he is rejecting the concept of God which is looking around himself. Almighty God, he requires to eat, he requires to drink, he requires to rest, he requires to sleep, he can be defeated, he can be harassed. So when he's looking around himself that if such a person is God, I don't believe in such a God. So I tell, even I don't believe in such a God, la ilaha, but the true God, Allah, illallah. So I have to convince to this atheist the true concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as my son Farik, he discussed in great detail the true concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll just repeat a few minutes of his talk that the best definition that anyone can give about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or Almighty God is quote Surah Ikhlas chapter number 112 verse number 1 to 4 which says Qul huwa Allahu ahad Say he is Allah one and only Allahu samad Allah the absolute eternal 
لم يلد ولم يولد he begets not nor is begotten ولم يكن له كفناد there's nothing like him this is a four line definition of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of almighty god if any person says that so and so candidate is god if that candidate fits in this four line definition we muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as god the first is kul huwa allah ahad says allah one and only the first is kul huwa allah ahad says allah one and only number 2 allah hu samad allah the absolute and eternal number 3 lam yalid wa lam yulad he begets not nor is begotten wa lam yakul lahu kufnad there nothing like him this is a four line definition of allah subhanahu wa taala of almighty god if any person says so and so candidate is god if that candidate fits in this four line definition we muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as god this surah class is the touchstone of theology theo means god logy means study theology means the study of god surah class if any candidate fits in this four line definition we muslims have got no objection in accepting that person as almighty god for example there are some human beings who consider bhagwan rajnish to be god one student question answer time the hindu brother of ours who said that we hindus do not believe bhagwan rajnish to be god i never said that the hindus believe bhagwan rajnish is god i have read the hindu scriptures nowhere do the hindu scriptures ever say that bhagwan rajnish is god what i said some human beings believe that bhagwan rajnish is god let's put this bhagwan rajnish to the test of surah class the first is qul huwa allah ahad say he is allah one and only is bhagwan rajnish one and only is he the only man who has claimed divinity there are thousands of men who have claimed divinity and if country where i come from there are thousands and hundreds of men who have claimed to be god bhagwan rajnish is not the only one but rajnish bhakti will say no no he is unique he is the only one so let's go to the next test allah us samad allah the absolute and eternal was rajnish absolute and eternal when we read his autobiography he says that he was suffering from asthma from diabetes mellitus from chronic backache imagine almighty god suffering from asthma chronic backache from diabetes mellitus the third test lam milad walam yulad he begets not nor is begotten and we know bhagwan rajnish he was born in madhya pradesh and he had a mother and father in 1981 he goes to america and he takes thousands of american for a ride and in the state of oregon he starts his own village called rajnishpuram later on the american government arrest him and they put him behind bars and he says rajnish alleges that the american government they gave me slow poisoning imagine almighty god being slow poisoned and 1985 the american government kicked him out of usa and he comes back to india and goes to the city of pune in maharashtra where he had a center before and he starts his center again which is today called as osho called as osho commune and if you go to pune it's mentioned on a samadhi bhagwan rajnish osho never born never died but visited the earth from the 11th of december 1931 to the 19th of january 1990 never born never died but visited the earth from the 11th of december 1931 to the 19th of january 1990 they forgot to mention in his samadhi that he was not given visas to 21 different countries of the world imagine almighty god visiting the earth different countries and it requires visas and the arch bishop of greece said if you don't remove rajnish out of this country we'll burn his house and the house of a disciple and the last test walam yakul lahu kufanad is so stringent that no one besides the true almighty god can pass the moment you can compare god to anything in this world he is not god walam yakul lahu kufanad there's nothing like him